Now let's think about this hungering a little bit more. The obvious sin in the text is Isaac's unrestrained appetite. Our appetite for sin sidetracks our appetite for God. Our hunger for sin sidetracks and is contrary to our hunger for godliness. Our hunger for sin is contrary to our hunger for God. They cannot coexist. We cannot have two masters. One will be stronger than the other. One, will, one we will follow and obey, and one we will set aside. It's worth meditating upon Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Uh, a nice paraphrase of this. Happy are they that have found righteousness in Christ, because they have the peace of God. See, the word blessed there is, is happy. We try to find happiness in so many things and the other longings of our heart, but there is no happiness to be found there. It is always unsatisfactory. The only thing that is going to satisfy our hearts is finding our satisfaction in Christ and what He has done. Friends, do you hunger for the peace of God? Do you hunger for a deeper experience of God? Do you hunger to know who Christ is and to see Him more? You see, hunger is a key mark of health. If you're not hungry, you're not healthy, physically speaking and spiritually speaking. If you are not hungry, you're not healthy. Do you hunger for knowing the righteousness of God? Do you hunger to know who you are in Christ? Do you hunger to experience at a deeper level the great benefits and the blessings that Christ has accomplished for us on the cross? If you are not hungry, you're not spiritually healthy. See, of all the desires we have for godliness or for sex, food, money, whatever else the, other desire, the desire is, the one desi desire that is never to be constrained or restrained or corralled is your desire for God. Every other desire we have must be constrained. God has given us a good desire for food, but that must be constrained. That must be corralled. Our desire for God, it should never be constrained. But this is what we do. We constrain our desire for God by allowing other desires to overwhelm it. That's the battle. That's the internal spiritual battle that we are in. We constrain and restrain our desire for God by letting other desires come around it. We must deny our, our sinful passions so that our godly desires grow. They're warring at one another. They're two different masters. If we want to have a hunger for God, if we want to have a hunger for the things above, if we want to have a hunger for the things of God, we must deny ourselves the other passions, the other appetites, the other things we thirst for. Do you hunger for a higher experience of God? A richer experience of His beauty, His power, His grace, His love, His peace. When we're not hungering for God, what we're typically going to be doing is coveting the other things people have. When you're not hungering for God, you're probably just being distracted and coveting the other things of this world and allowing those desires to overwhelm your hunger for God and what He has. If you lack hunger, here's the prescription. Meditate on the cross and the resurrection. That is where you see the love of God manifest. Meditate upon the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Pursue Him in His word and in prayer. It's simple. But it takes discipline. It takes denying yourself. If you lack hunger and you, you used to have it, it's going to take some hard meditation, but this is what I suggest you do. Go back and pursue that sin that sidetracked you from having the hunger. If you once had a hunger and a thirst and you're wondering, whatever happened to me? Why did that go away? 
Well, God didn't remove his presence with you. He's always with you. You stopped hungering after him. Either a sin came up that you decided you were going to hunger after more than God, or what most likely happened is that you were progressing in sanctification, as you're progressing in your love for God, all of a sudden another sin was revealed that's already been in your heart since day one, and you said, I can't give that up. You see, the closer we get to God, the more we love God, the more our sin is revealed. And probably what happens is we start realizing, oh, I've got to give that up. I've got to stop loving that thing. I don't know if I can do it. And that's when our hunger for God is destroyed. What you need to do is go back and figure out what that one thing was that you weren't willing to give up and give it up. What you have to do is think about what that one thing was that you're afraid of giving up for God and say, God is better than that thing. God is going to give me satisfaction and not that one thing. Friends, we are called to hunger and thirst for God, and he will satisfy us. But in order for him to satisfy us, we have to stop hungering and thirsting for all the different things of this world. 